Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here and today we'll be going through an update to my daily driver, Arch Linux. I've been using Arch for a few weeks now and I've made slow but steady progress here. There's been quite a few changes and I'd like to go through some of those today. The most noticeable thing, as you can see on the screen, things look much better and we're using a different Windows tiling manager at this point. Thanks to one of the members of Discord, we have a beautiful setup here, much better than I could ever do. We'll be kind of going through this setup and make sure to stick to the end for a special announcement about this setup. I'll also make sure to post a link in the description to the GitHub repo for this. We're using xmonad here, and if I start populating a terminal, I'm gonna run NeoFetch just so you can get a full effect here of how things look and are set up in this tiling manager. Let me run HTOP as well, and maybe bring in something like the VLC media player from the bottom. I'll move some stuff around here. There we go, that looks pretty good. So with this setup, we can see that I'm using a quite a bit of memory, but that's not due to the actual X Nomad setup. It's really just to do with how many screens I have running here in the background. I'm actually running two screens right now. And if I move you over to my second screen here, you can see the various different programs I have running. Firefox is running in the background. We can see here the GitHub repo for this beautiful Xmonad setup. I've been really excited about this. I love the transitions it makes across the screen, as well as the various different setups we can have here with Xnomad. It's really fluid and fun to use. The bar is up in the left-hand corner allow you to go through your already open applications. On the right hand side, we have some shortcuts as well as the time. And on the bottom, we have a beautiful bar that allows you to open up quickly any applications that you would like. So this is a big focus for me because I went from DWM over to X Nomad pretty quick after I figured out how terrible I was at trying to customize the desktop environment, saw this beautiful thing and figured why not try this out for a while. Mainly because I was more focused on productivity and I wasn't getting uh, very far with my own setup. So again, shout out to the Discord member who made this. And of course, you should check it out for yourself. Also, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe below for future videos on Linux and programming, reviewing some of the stuff that I've done since the last video that I made. Let me get rid of some of this and then show you what I've actually installed here. And we'll just run NeoFetch here still. And in, on this left-hand side, we can post some commands. So hopefully we can see things out here on the left. The first thing I installed was for my sound. I have ALSA. I got things running pretty quick with the Alza mixer. I was able to get things running, but I did run into a few issues here where I had to end up with the Pulse Audio package. I thought I was going to be able to run everything purely with ALSA, but it proved a little challenging whenever I was trying to get between my various different sound cards that I have available. As you can see here, we have at least three available, one on the motherboard, one through the GPU, and another for my microphone. So if we exit out of here, Pulse Audio really took um, care of everything. And as you can tell, I'm recording, so my microphone and the sound is working just great. I also went through and installed the latest NVIDIA proprietary drivers. If we launch that real quick, I have the NVIDIA settings available here. And we can see that I have a multi-monitor support, which is working great here in Arch Linux with this current X Nomad setup. I haven't had any issues. You could see my other screen earlier. It's working very well. One's a display port, one's running off the HDMI. I haven't had any issues so far, and I've been running this game Velerin quite nicely with my current setup and the drivers that I have. If we hit play, we can check out how beautiful Velerin looks trying to log in, but we won't play today. Instead, we'll exit out of uh, these couple windows here. As far as the graphics, go. This is currently driver version 455 that I'm running here. I got to say from Pop! OS when I was running that one at 430, there has been a little bit of improvement as far as my gameplay goes. I'm not sure what's been changed here in the proprietary drivers. I've seen a little bit better response since I stream and play at the same time. 
things have been a little easier on that side of things. It might have even been just because I refreshed my configuration settings while installing the new drivers. All right, if I quit out of here, quit trying to use the keyboard, getting used to the key bindings here in X monad. They're pretty fluid. I like how they're using the super key as the Windows key. I'm kind of used to that. And I gotta say it is very comparable, at least to me, to what they have inside of DWM. Really just moving over mod keys. I also installed OBS. I've been using that to be able to stream my videos. If I just look at the OBS package here, we have OBS and the OBS FFMPEG mux package so I can remux my video files over to MP4. One thing that I did have trouble with was the sound card for audio to work. I did fix that also through ALSA and that was in the vim.asoundrc. I was having trouble with the microphone and I added these few lines in which helped me pick the default device that I want when everything boots up. Again, I was having trouble when things booted up and this uh, fixed it here for me. Of course, no system can be complete without a nice emoji pack. I installed the Google open source emoji pack and installed Discord. Let's switch up views here and we can see how well Discord blends in here with the rest of the theme. Everything looks great. And if you haven't already, make sure to smash that like button for me. It really does help me out. Also, think about joining our Discord channel. I'll put a link in the description below. We're a helpful bunch. I did install both the base development package as well as Rust. Let's go back to our original view here and just check out some things. So I did mention that we're running a bunch of programs currently at 1.77 gigs here out of 32. Not much, but we do have 70 tasks and 385 threads currently. I've been up for about 45 minutes now, just perusing around. And currently we are running Arch Linux x86 64-bit with the 5.10 kernel. It has 596 packages. We're running ZSH for our shell. One thing I didn't mention is I currently have Alacrity running for my terminal. It's a great and fast terminal. And the current font that I'm running is the iOS Veka nerd font. All right, so we have dual monitors. That's been working great as well here. My Arch Linux daily driver. Xmonad is my new window manager. I have the Alacrity terminal, like I mentioned before. We're running this on an AMD 73700X with 16 cores at 3.6 gigahertz with an NVIDIA GTX 1660 Super. I haven't had too much trouble with my NVIDIA graphics card ever since I installed those NVIDIA proprietary drivers. I do have one little issue when I'm running multiple screens and Firefox and streaming at the same time it does bog down a little bit on the rendering starts really becoming choppy, but it's not a problem. That's because I'm probably overworking my system. I installed LightDM as a greeter. And at the bottom, we can see a few applications. I have Firefox as my default web browser. If we move over, I talked about installing Discord earlier. We can launch Alacrity from down here. I have HTOP as well for easy access to process views. OBS Studio for streaming and recording my screen. VLC Media Player as my media player of choice. This is for Velorin, a game I play. If you haven't checked that out, make sure to check out this free and open source game available to anyone and everyone. Developed in Rust, it's a great game if you want to just explore a little bit or learn a little bit of Rust with their development community. And then finally, over on the far right hand side, I have VS Codium as my default IDE and programming environment. And if you still haven't already, make sure to go down below, smash that like button for me. And I got to say, I just love this theme. I see that Dracula theme could go very well with this if you have third party packages installed, such as VS Codium you could install the Dracula theme since that's available across the board for most third-party packages that have theming available. So it makes it easy to match all your various different programs with this theme. It's quite beautiful. It's minimalistic as well as it, it really does look good. If, if we just exit out of a few of these here, we can again see how simplistic things are. Yet it's very powerful. And if you have to use the mouse 
instead of the keyboard, it's fairly easy to do so as well. Of course, if you wanted to launch something and you wanted to resize it on your own, you can do this as well. So we can set things up according to how we see fit. I'm really loving the font as well that I'm using here. Let me just resize a few things and we can see how good things look even like this. For those of you that sometimes just need to move things around the screen in your own way instead of tiling things, this of course is easy enough as well. As far as taking screenshots, I've installed Scrot so I can make some screenshots from the terminal. And overall, I've really enjoyed using Pac-Man as my new default package manager here in Arch Linux. The AUR is incredible. It's easy to install stuff from the user repositories using Yay. And it's not something I'm particularly used to since I'm more used to using Debian-based distributions and using the Aptitude package manager. I'm really enjoying that and I gotta say, there hasn't been too much trouble with anything. Uh, the sound took a little bit to get uh, running, so did my Wi-Fi, but after I got those things squared away, everything has been running smoothly. I haven't run into too many hiccups. The major hiccup that I ran into was trying to create my own customized window manager, which I just found taking so much time up, and I'm super happy for this beautiful customization job that one of the Discord members did. Again, I'll put a link in the description below so you can check that out. And since you stuck around for this long, I will let you know that I will be creating a video very soon in the next few days on how to actually install this on your own Arch Linux build. This is also available for most other Linux distributions, but the two major ones that are described on the GitHub page are going to be for Gentoo and Arch. Some of the features of this customization are Xmonad, as mentioned, EWW, there's a beautiful Firefox theme, Rafi's on here, Tint2 for customization purposes of these various different bars that we have. Let me just launch Tint2, the config here, and we can see the various different bars that we have available and how they've been customized. Very easy tool to use and actually kind of and customize to your own liking as well. If you don't like necessarily the current bar setup, it's very easy to go through and adjust it for your own self. The terminal looks absolutely amazing in my opinion. Love the font, love the colors, and everything installed in order to make it look quite perfect in my opinion. The setup here is not that hard. Documentation is, is very good and currently available are two major resolutions, 1920 by 1080 and, and 1366 by 768. Again, if you have multiple monitors, I haven't had any issues here, so uh, feel free to use this with multiple monitors. The stacking of the windows and the tile manager are great, and it's my first time using Xmonad. I've really enjoyed it so far. It is written in Haskell, so I'm unfamiliar with that, but not a big deal. The customization is fairly straightforward. So what are my plans for the future of this Arch Linux setup that I have going now? Well, I'm going to take my time and slowly keep customizing and tweaking things in order to make my experience overall. But I'm ready to start my migration over, so there's going to be quite a few files being transferred over to here and setups as well from my Pop! OS setup. I'm comfortable enough making the move at this point. So really now it's a matter of just migrating things over. I'll start doing my programming and my videos on this Arch Linux setup. So you will probably be seeing more of this setup. I still have to install VirtualBox on here. That's one thing that I've forgotten for my virtual machines that I like to play around in. But overall, I'm very excited to start using this. Well, that's about it. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to post them in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.